In this video, I'd like to introduce you to exponential models. Let's suppose we're building a Sims style game about a city and we want to have the city grow over time. So let's look at two ways we can do it. In both cases, we're going to start with 100 houses and then every iteration of the game will just stand for like a year in our simulated world. We're gonna make a table of data for two scenarios and then we'll graph that on a set of axes. In the first scenario, we're gonna increase by 10 houses each iteration. So this one's pretty simple. If we start with 100 houses and we add 10 houses, we would have 110 houses in the first iteration. In the second iteration, we would have 120 houses. The third iteration, 130 houses. The fourth iteration, 140. The fifth, 150. The sixth, 160. The seventh, 170. And the eighth, 180. In fact, all we're really doing here is adding 10 every time we do an iteration. So we have very steady, linear growth. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna try is to increase the number of houses by 10% every iteration instead. Now to increase by 10%, we wanna actually multiply by 1.1 every time because we're increasing by 10, we're doing 110% each time. So to get this first column of the table here. Let me just describe the table so that we can fill it out as we go. The top row is the iterations, zero through eight. The bottom row is the number of houses, which starts at 100 because we're starting with 100 houses. So when we do the first iteration here, we're actually doing 100 times 1.10. 1.10, again, it stands for 110%. We're increasing by 10%. So if you do 100 times 1.10, you'll get 110. In the second iteration, we're taking 110 and multiplying it by 1.10. When we do that, we get 121. Now, another way to write that would be to say it's 100 times 1.10 times 1.10. And that also gives us 121. Okay, now we go to the third iteration. Now we need to take 121 and multiply it by 1.10. We need to increase 121 by 10%. When we do that multiplication, we get 133.1. Now we could do it that way, or we could go back to how we calculated the previous one and just say, hey, we can get this number also by doing 100 times 1.10 times 1.10 times 1.10. Hopefully you're starting to see a pattern here. So as we move across, we could either multiply by 1.10 every time, or when we get to a number like say the sixth iteration, we could do 100 and then that's times 1.10 six times or 1.10 to the sixth power. So we can continue to calculate all of these moving across the page. So if we go through this process of doing all the multiplication for the fourth iteration, we'll have 146.41 houses. For the fifth iteration, we'll have 161.051 houses. For the sixth iteration, 177.1561 houses. For the seventh iteration, 194.8717 houses. And for the eighth iteration, 214.3589 houses. You can see that the second scenario involves numbers that are not quite as nice as the first scenario. To clear the variables for our scenarios, and then let's go ahead and graph these in Desmos. So first n, n is just the iteration number for our game. So let's just write that down. Ultimately, that represents years in the game. S1 is gonna be our first scenario. So this is the scenario where we add 10 each iteration. And S2 is gonna be the scenario where we increase by 10% each iteration. Okay, um, before we graph, let's actually write the formula since we're right here. Um, we know that this first scenario, we already kind of figured that formula out. We're adding 10 each time. So let's say for scenario one, 
of n, we have, we're starting with 100, and then every time we do an iteration, we're adding 10 times n. So when we do iteration 3, we're adding 10 times 3. We can check that up here. That would give us 130. So that looks okay. We also figured out a formula for the second scenario because we know that we can get iteration 6 by doing 100 times 1.10 to the 6th, right? And so our formula for the second scenario, S2 of n, we're going to start with 100 and then we're going to multiply by 1.10 to the nth. So in the 6th iteration, it would be 1.10 to the 6th. In the 8th iteration, 1.10 to the 8th, etc. Okay, let's take a look at this graph now. For the first scenario, we're going to start with 100 and climb up to 180. So iteration 0 is 100, iteration 1 would be 110, iteration 2 would be 120, 3 would be 130, 4 would be 140, 5 would be 150. So you can see it's climbing very steadily. I'm just going to keep climbing at exactly the same rate until I get to iteration 8. You can see that's a nice straight line. I'm going to grab my ruler and graph a line between those. And this is scenario 1. I'm going to use a different color for scenario 2. Let me do this one in kind of the orangey color. Uh, I still start at 100, right? 0, 100. At 1, I have 110, so that even is exactly the same. At 2, I have 121, it's just a little bit bigger. At 3, 133, again a little bit bigger. 4, 146. 5, 161. Starting to diverge from the other line now. 6, 177, 7, 194, and 8, 214. So you can see that one is starting to diverge a bit. It's not a straight line, it's actually a curve. So if I draw that one in, it's increasing just slightly, moving away a little bit more at a time from the S1 curve. This is the scenario two curve. I just want to show you in Desmos so you can see that I that this is correct. So let's jump over to Desmos. I have the data graphed here, um, and I can actually put in the two functions we drew as well. Now Desmos isn't crazy about you using s sub one and s sub two in the functions when you've already used them in the columns of the data table. And so for this reason, I'm using capital S of n and capital T of n to graph these two functions. So first I'll add capital S of n, that's the straight line, and you can see that's a nice straight line. And then I'll add T of n, which is the 100 times 1.1 to the n. And you can see that that does curve. And in fact, if I zoom out in this graph, you can see the curve even more.